There is so much to get into with this whole Pastor John Paul Miller and Micah Miller deal. The apparent, you know, Micah Miller taking her own life, and I don't believe that for one second, and as I know many of you don't believe it either. But, I mean, I got things to get into here in this video. We're, we're, we're talking about, you know, JP's own father and his criminal background. This is going to be very interesting to talk about. Um, where Micah Miller was actually on her way to go the day that she was, you know, supposedly, you know, took her own life. Again, I'm not buying that at all. Uh, and I have a whole lot of other things to get into and talk, especially we're going to get into uh, John Paul trying to escape the country as more evidence is now coming out from everywhere. There's so much, the cremation process here involving uh Involving Micah, the new girlfriend, Susie Skinner, the background there, and her ex-husband. Yeah, I hope you guys stick with me. We're going to be jumping all over the place, so, you know, kind of bear with me. We're going to be, there's just, again, there's so much to cover with this. Welcome, everybody. Got to start this off official. Welcome, everybody, to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you, as always, that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, yeah, that's kind of my only option. And speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? People ask me questions, so I made a video that explains it all. You'll find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you enjoy what I do, if you enjoy and appreciate my work, and you would like to contribute to my ministry with the donation, there's a couple of different ways you could do that. One, just by simply hitting the super thanks button on the YT video here. Or you can join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month by going to patreon.com slash news. That link is in the description. And hey, when you join my Patreon, you get all of these videos before they hit the main YT platform. So it's pretty cool. Check it out. Uh, again, it's patreon.com slash news. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Let's get into this. John Paul Miller, and, and for the duration of this video, I'm just going to simply refer to him here as JP because it'll just be easier uh, when describing him and getting into all of this. So by now, I'm sure that many of you have heard that JP's wife, Micah Miller, tragically died on Saturday, April 27th. JP was very quick to be the only one that said that the cause of her death was due to her taking her own life by a self-inflicted gunshot. Now, I will point out here again, he is the only one that is saying this. And he said that he got a phone call several hours that night after she had passed away informing him that she took her own life. But we do not know who this individual was that called him because it surely wasn't anybody that was you know, representing the police department, okay? These are just his claims. It just, it, I guess it was a ghost that called JP and said that, oh, Micah just shot herself. She's gone. But again, police are not saying that. JP took time to write an obituary, I mean, a glowing one of himself about how much Micah loved her husband and was willing to serve him in every way. Just really creepy stuff. And, you know, he told the church in this after he finished preaching the sermon. He didn't tell them at the beginning of the service. He told them at the end of the service. He was even cracking jokes throughout the sermon. And then he turned serious at the end and just announces this like in the last minute of the service says everything that I just previously talked about. But then he says, we're going to have a funeral here. It's going to be next Sunday. That would have been May 5th at 3 p.m. But then he said something interesting. He told the congregation not to talk about the news of his wife's death in the church. Don't talk about it, he said. Just be quiet about it. You know, just pray for us. Pray for the families. So he tried to control the narrative from the pulpit. Huge red flag to me right there when you do something like that. And again, I would love to know who called him and told him that Micah was the one that took her own life. Because if you ask the family, they are pushing back and they are saying otherwise, including saying that some of them talked to her even up until the night before she passed away. And this was a woman who was planning to live life, to move on from JP. You have to understand that Micah Miller was manipulated by at a very young age by JP when she was only 14 and in the youth group. Now, I will point out here that they have both admitted, that being JP and Micah, that their relationship both started off 
with each other started off in adultery. JP was already previously married, had five kids. Micah was in another relationship of her own as well. But again, Micah was manipulated. If you And I'm using a different word for obvious reasons, but I think you know where I'm going with this. Was manipulated from the time that she was in the youth group here as JP was getting ready for his next woman, if you know what I mean. Now, as things began to advance from there, this led to the two of them getting married in 2017. Michael would have been 23 at the time. She was just 30 years old when she tragically passed away. And if you look at some of her more recent videos that she had posted on social media over the past several months, many of them talked about divorce, how God hates divorce because the two of them were apparently separated. But the family were also backing up claims that Micah was mistreated, and that's another word I'm using here for obvious reasons, in the marriage on multiple levels. Some family and friends have said, and these are their claims, okay, so this is allegedly, they're saying that Micah was forced to watch JP interact with other women in front of her. That is incredibly disgusting on every level to force someone to have to endure that. Not only that, but Micah had tracking devices put on her vehicles. She had her tires slashed. She was beat up by JP. And all the while, JP tried to use her mental health struggles as a way to control her, control the narrative, manipulate every single situation, try to force medication upon her to make her even worse. It was the mistreatment of JP and the manipulation that he did to Micah at a very young age that I believe caused her to have the issues and the struggles that she did. This reminds me a lot of the Mike Bickle situation with IHOP KC. For those of you that have followed my coverage on that over the past several months, this is a lot with like what Mike Bickle did uh, when it came to these girls. The manipulation from a very young age, right? Promising them certain things and everything, and then it just gets worse and worse as that whole train goes on from there. Now, I want to mention this as well because this was some new information that had just recently come out. And this involves where Micah was on her way the day that she died. She was actually on her way to work, according to friends and family. And she had apparently left in her work uniform. She worked at a restaurant. She was actually doing what she could to earn some extra money because she was trying to pay off uh, her latest car payment. But she didn't end up arriving to work that day. Remember, she was she ended up in North Carolina. This was about an hour to an hour and a half away from her job at the restaurant. And this is where she was apparently found with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Although now there are reports out there that she was apparently shot in the back of the head. That's interesting. Now, another social media post by Mike. I told you I'm going all over the place, so I appreciate you all bearing with me through this. Because again, there's just so much to get into. But in another social media post, Micah had posted something that was pretty, pretty dark, if you ask me. And it talked about how, you know, when tragic things happen, when bad things happen. And it was just, it was very dark, almost implicating that she knew something could potentially happen to her. Even in texts that she sent to family and friends. One particular text told friends that she believed that JP would try and frame her, that if something bad ever happened to her, that if he came after her in that way, that he would frame it and make it look like she did it. These are messages that the family and friends said that they received from her. And what happened? What have we seen since April 27th? Controlling of the narrative from JP, right? Trying to play the victim like he was the one that had to endure all of the mistreatment in the marriage. I don't think so. I'm not buying it. I know not every marriage is perfect, but I'm just not buying this for one single second. She's on her way to work. She doesn't end up at work. She ends up in North Carolina, gunshot to the back of the head. Okay. Okay. Now, let me get into 
this new girlfriend. Because I don't forget, I, I'm not didn't forget about the whole him trying to leave the country thing. The new girlfriend, Susie Skinner. What was interesting about this is that just days after, just days after Micah's death, you have JP spotted in public multiple days with Susie Skinner. They were spotted in a bar together where people were taking pictures, posting them up on social media. They were spotted in other restaurants. In fact, at one point, Susie kind of looked right into the camera and kind of threw her hand up over her mouth, almost like she's like, oh no, we're caught. We're, we're busted. JP himself even looked into the camera and, and he was just, okay, we're, we're out and about, right? That seems awfully soon to be with another woman. Now, I know he had been separated, but even still, you know, he had his, still his wedding ring on in these pictures, also very weird. But let, let's go back. Let, let me go back a few years here because it was back in 2021 that because Susie Skinner was in a marriage prior to this as well. To all these people are all in affairs and having adultery and everything else. Her husband, Chris, Chris Skinner, he had an unfortunate accident about 20 years ago that left him paraplegic. So he's confined to a wheelchair. Had been. He had gotten fairly good at it, though. I mean, he could navigate, get himself around. And actually, he was working as a motivational speaker. Good for him. Developed a nice life for himself. One of the things that Chris loved to do was go to the community pool. And you have to understand, this was this was something that Chris did on a regular basis, okay? In fact, he was doing it ever since like 2013. This is all according to Susie Skinner. So he'd go to the community pool. He loved to, you know, sit out there and just enjoy his time. But one day, around Labor Day 2021... Chris apparently got a little bit too close to the pool and he fell into the pool in his wheelchair and he drowned. This was ruled as an accidental drowning. While some have stated that Chris took his own life and did this on purpose, I don't know if I'm buying this at all because again, Chris was somebody who was an expert around the water and wouldn't put himself in a situation to where something like this could happen. And another thing that I find strange too, that it being a community pool, how was it that there was nobody else around at the time that this happened? How was it that Chris was just out there by himself and no one saw this? Seems a little strange, doesn't it? You wanna know what's even stranger? You wanna know who did the funeral? I think you know. None other than JP himself. John Paul Miller. Yeah, I'm gonna refer to the met again just for the second. Pastor John Paul Miller did the funeral here for Chris. And then he ends up with the man's wife. Now, this was probably, you know, obviously when he was still married here to Micah, you know, and I, there are pictures of the two of them that were even at water parks together, even like a year or two ago. Okay. So obviously there was things going around. If you remember the claims by the other friends that the pastor, you know, had made Micah watch him when he was, you know, with these other girls. So this was a repeated pattern here by the pastor. Now, let me get to his father, because JP's father has another very interesting background that has come up in the midst of all of this discussion revolving around Micah's death. That being his own past with inappropriate behavior involving other men. That's right, because for his father, Wayne, he was on the other side, if you know what I mean. And his inappropriate behavior... Uh, went far beyond just this country. In fact, it led also all the way into Pakistan where nefarious deeds were done over there as well. Uh, and I'll have some more information on this, by the way. I'm going to put a link in the description. It's going to have a lot of this information there too. So if you want to go read it after you get in watching this video, that will be there for you to check out. So his father, who's a, a disgraced minister in his own right, just a, you know, a completely crooked, corrupt ministry you know, altogether, He's involved here with these other dudes. Okay, that's horrible. And then there's JP's oldest son who was arrested himself back in January of 2024. For what? Oh, just involving, you know, you know, pushing around his spouse a little bit, right? I mean, just nothing to see here. Uh, by the way, multiple charges as well have also gone against JP for similar instances involving him and his first wife, where uh, he too took liberties with her. There was property damage charges, so much uh, in regards to that, which again, I will have more in the link in the description. So when Micah's friends talk about mistreatment here, 
of her in the marriage. I can fully believe it now based off his past situations involving his other wife. Now, there was also talks that Pastor JP tried to rush a cremation for Micah after the news of her death, but her family thankfully has fought him on that and has said, absolutely not. As the memorial was held on Sunday, May 5th. As this investigation, remember, it is still ongoing right now. And, and still, at the time that this I'm recording this, the police have still uh, not come out with any solid conclusion one way or the other. So we will continue to await that, that piece of news, which is going to be very important when it comes out. But then there's this. In light of all of this evidence that has now come out against John Paul Miller, we now hear, again, this is according to friends, family, and those who, who know JP that are wanting to see, because remember, the hashtag right now is justice for Micah, and it's absolutely true. We need it. JP and Susie Skinner allegedly tried to skip out of the country to the Bahamas. Now, this was allegedly happening right after they held the memorial for Micah Miller. They wanted to hold that thing, get in, and get out. Now, apparently it didn't happen. Now, again, this is this is allegedly what we're now hearing, okay? That he tried to leave the country, tried to go to the Bahamas, so that because he knows. This is the, see, the hammer is going to get dropped now, okay? He's going to face charges for what he's done. There are so many things that he's done in the past as well that's all just coming back up as well. Micah's, you know, unfortunate death is just the latest here. But this is also somebody... This is important for me to mention too. And again, I appreciate you sticking with me here for this because there's just so much uh, to talk about, but I know it's important to cover, so that's why I'm still here doing this. The pastor had been making some interesting comments about Micah in past sermons over the last couple of months. And he seemed very defensive when he spoke about her. In fact, he told a story during one service where he actually got a hold of Micah's phone and he had been looking through there because he was looking at all these text messages that she had received from different friends and family that were saying things like, you know, if you ever need someone to talk to about the issues that you're going through, you know, you can feel free to reach out to me. Now he admits this. JP admits that he took his wife's phone to read these messages and he didn't like this one bit because obviously he knew that she was going to out him that she was going to actually tell what was really going on here. And he even said that there was a couple of, of men's names in those text messages that came up. And he really didn't like that at all. Said, what is, you know, why are these men sending my wife text messages? He goes, no, I, I'm the one that she should be talking to. Not these other people. This is ridiculous. So he was getting a little scared, even in the last couple of months as he was going through these messages. Obviously, he didn't trust his wife. And well, <laughs> I mean, based off what he was doing, the guy was paranoid. And he tried every chance he got to control the narrative from his pulpit. Now, let me say this, and I am wrapping this up. There were also reports that Solid, his church, Solid Rock at Market Common, has reportedly been closed down. Now, I cannot confirm that 100%, but that is what I am also seeing, that the church has closed due to the amount of just complete backlash that has come in here in regards to everything that has happened. There were protests that were held on Sunday, May 5th, when the memorial service was going on. Actually, earlier in the morning before that, uh, they had protests out there. Again, justice for Micah. Uh, there was some reports going on out there that there was an individual that was arrested, although that was not confirmed 100%. So uh, Solid Rock is in major trouble. Again, JP trying to leave the country with Susie Skinner. Look, <laughs> There, there's no doubt. Look, God is exposing all of us. He is allowing all of it to come out and, and be out in the light because the darkness has been the darkness has been hanging for too long, and it's time that it got exposed, right? And look, we know, and I, many of you do too. We believe that Micah is with Jesus. So she, she ain't in this world anymore. She's not suffering. She is sorely missed by family, friends, everybody. She did not deserve to go at such a young age the way that she did. But she is with the Lord. And she is in paradise. And she's no doubt joyful singing before the Lord. As singing is something that she loved to do. She was the worship leader there at the church. But for people like JP 
and all these other characters that pose as pastors and deceive and manipulate people. And God forbid, even potentially take the life of their own wife. There is going to be a harsh judgment that comes for you. If you do not repent and get your life right with the Lord before it's too late. I will continue to keep you updated on this story as more news becomes available. Uh, trust me, I have been doing a lot of digging on this, a lot of research, and I do appreciate all of you who have been watching and following along with me here and showing me the support. It really does uh, mean a great deal. Don't forget, I will have more information in the description. You can check the link out there for more info on this story. And again, if you appreciate my work, you enjoy what I do, feel free to donate. Remember, you can hit the super thanks button on the YT video here, or you can join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month at patreon.com slash notbysightnews. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. And I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I discuss here in the church, exposing the false prophets, we always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. So for anybody watching now, if you are someone that has not yet accepted Christ into your life and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. The first thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. I welcome your thoughts. You can leave them down below in the comment section. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.